Welcome back to Brain Candy TV. Hey, Brainiacs! We've learned a lot about shapes, numbers, and colors in our previous videos. What do you say, Lizzie? Do you want to review some of the things we've learned with another Monster Truck stunt show? All right, let's head on over to our stunt jumping monster trucks for a fun review of our colors, shapes, and numbers. Our colorful monster trucks are all lined up and ready for their stunts. Do you remember what color this truck is? It's the color orange. It's orange like a basketball or a pumpkin. The orange truck is going to jump through this hoop. Do you remember what this shape is called? That's right! This shape is a circle. After the circle hoop, the truck will crash through these blocks and this giant number. This is the number 16. And there are 16 blocks stacked up in front. Okay, orange truck, let's go! Number one is down, and there goes the big number six. Our second truck is a different color. What is this bright color called? Yeah, it's the color yellow. It's yellow like a banana or a rubber ducky. This time the hoop is shaped like a square. A square is a shape with all four sides the same. And our number this time is the number eight, with eight blocks in front. Okay, yellow truck, stunt time! Nice! There's not much left of that big number eight. And the yellow truck knocked over almost all eight of the blocks. This time, our truck is the color blue. It's blue just like the sky or like blueberries. This hoop has four sides like a square, but two sides are longer than the others. That makes this shape a rectangle. On the other side of the river, we can see 10 blocks and a big number 10. It's easy to count to 10. Just count the fingers on both your hands. All right, blue truck, let's go! Wow, what a crash! Nice one, blue truck. Do you know what color this truck is? It's the color purple. It's purple like an eggplant or a purple flower. The purple truck is going to jump through this three-sided shape. It's a triangle. Then it has to go through 20 blocks and crash through the huge number 20. Let's go, purple truck. Show us what you've got! Nice one! The purple truck knocked down almost all 20 blocks! Next up is the green truck. It's green like a frog or a tree. This time our hoop looks like a circle, but it's stretched. Do you remember what this shape is called? Yes, it's an oval. And look at all of those blocks. There's five rows of 10 blocks. That means there's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 blocks. Let's see how many blocks our green monster truck can knock down. 
Ready, green truck? Three, two, one, go! Oh, it looks like there were too many blocks for one truck to knock down. Hold on, it looks like we have a few more. <laughs> That's a bit better. All right, here's our last truck. You remember the name of this color, don't you? It's the color red. It's red like an apple or a fire truck. This hoop has eight sides, and it's the same shape as a stop sign. That must mean that this shape is an octagon. Whoa! Look how many blocks we have this time. This time there are ten rows of ten blocks. That's twice as many as last time. Can you guess what number this is? It's one hundred! Okay, red truck. I hope you're ready to take on all of those blocks. Ready? Let's go! Crash! The red truck knocked down almost 100 blocks in one try. It doesn't get much better than that. Hey Brainiacs, wasn't that a fun way to practice our colors, numbers, and shapes? We're going to learn lots of cool new stuff here soon, so make sure you come back and keep learning! Hey, Brainiacs! We've already learned the names of a lot of colors, but did you know you can mix colors together to make new colors? Let's use our stunt jumping monster trucks to learn all about color mixing! When we're working with paint, there are three main colors. These are called the primary colors. They are the color red, the color yellow, and the color blue. Primary colors are pure colors that cannot be created by mixing other colors together. When you mix two primary colors in equal amounts, they make a secondary color. The secondary colors are orange, green, and purple. Today we have some very special monster trucks that can mix their paint colors when they crash into each other. Let's crash our special monster trucks to see what kinds of colors we can make. First up, we have two primary colors, red and blue. Which secondary color do you think they'll make when they mix together? Okay, let's go, primary trucks! Cool! The blue and red trucks mixed to make the secondary color purple. So red mixed with blue makes the color purple. Okay, let's add in some ramps and see if we can mix the truck colors in the air. This time we have a yellow truck and a red truck. I wonder what color these trucks will make when we crash them together. Okay, let's go! Oh no! They didn't hit each other, so they didn't change color. Let's try that again. Here we go! Alright! The red truck mixed with the yellow truck, and they turned orange. So red, mixed with yellow, makes the color orange. Now let's bring in some huge ramps 
for an even bigger color mixing stunt. Whoa, that's a long way down. These trucks are gonna make a huge crash. Our last two primary colors to mix are the color yellow and the color blue. Let's see what kind of color they will make when we mix them together. Okay, primary trucks, let's mix our colors. Awesome! The yellow and blue trucks made the color green. So yellow mixed with blue makes the color green. Cool! So now we know how to use the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, to make all of the secondary colors. Orange, purple, and green. But there is one more color that we can make if we combine all three primary colors together. What color do you think it will be? Let's find out. Okay, for our grand finale, we're going to need to get three trucks to crash together. So we've installed a hydraulic launcher in the center of the color wheel to shoot the red truck up into the air. All right, primary trucks. Three, two, one, go! Whoa, what a stunt! But wait a minute, that's the color brown. Who would have thought that mixing those bright colors would make the color brown? Well, now we know, when you mix the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, they create the color brown. Brown is a special kind of color called a tertiary color. We'll learn all about tertiary colors next time. Stay tuned for more color mixing fun with our cool stunt jumping monster trucks. Stay tuned, we'll be back after these messages. Hey Brainiacs. Welcome back to Crash Course Stadium. Are you ready to learn more about colors with our awesome stunt jumping monster trucks? Lizzie's excited, aren't you Lizzie? <laughs> okay, let's go. In our last video, we learned all about the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, and how to mix them to make the secondary colors orange, purple, and green. But what happens if we mix a primary color with a secondary color? Let's set up our special color mixing monster trucks again to find out. Okay, here we have our special monster trucks that can mix their paint colors together when they crash into each other. Whoa, look at the size of that giant loop. On this side, we have the primary color blue. On the other side, we have the secondary color green. Let's crash them together to see what color they will make. Three, two, one, go! Oh, cool! What a nice color! When we mix a primary color like blue with a secondary color like green, it makes a tertiary color. This tertiary color is called blue-green. Another name for blue-green is cyan. So the primary color blue mixed with the secondary color green makes the tertiary color blue-green. All right, let's try that loop again and crash the red truck with the purple truck. Let's go! Nice! The red and purple trucks combine their colors to make the tertiary color red-purple. So red, mixed with purple, 
makes the tertiary color red purple. Let's see what happens when we mix two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, like blue and orange. These are called complementary colors. Okay, blue and orange trucks, let's mix our colors! Cool! The blue and orange trucks mix to make the color brown. So the complementary colors blue and orange make the color brown. In fact, all complementary colors that are across from each other on the color wheel will mix to make the color brown, like red and green, and yellow and purple. Another way we can make different colors is to add black or white to them. When we add black to a color, we call that a shade. Let's see what happens when we crash our black truck and our red truck. Oh, cool! Look, those trucks are locked in a stunt sphere. Look at them go around and around. Ooh, that was a close one. All right, what a crash. Look, the black truck and the red truck mixed to make the color maroon. Maroon is a darker shade of red. So red mixed with black makes the dark shade of red called maroon. When we add white to a color, we call that a tint. Let's see what we get when we crash our white truck with a red truck. But where is our other red truck? Oh no! Our second red truck is late for the show. Here he comes up the spiral ramp. He better hurry up. But how is he going to get down into the stadium? Whoa, I think he's going to jump from way up in the stands. Look out below! Awesome! What an amazing stunt! The red and white trucks made the color pink. So red mixed with white makes a lighter tint of red, the color pink. All right! Now you know how to make all sorts of secondary and tertiary colors, and even tints and shades. I hope you have fun mixing your paint colors in art class. Brainiacs, welcome to the Monster Truck Training Academy. Driving these huge, powerful trucks is no easy task. It takes a lot of practice, so this is where monster truck drivers can come to perfect their stunts before the big monster truck stunt shows. Monster trucks are so cool. They're custom designed to be really powerful and super tough so they can do all of these awesome stunts. Today we're going to have our very own monster truck made just for us. Let's head over to the truck factory and watch our truck get assembled as we learn about the different parts. Cool! This truck factory is making all sorts of trucks and their powerful engines. Look, all the parts of our monster truck are already laid out and ready for assembly. Let's put it together as we learn about each part. First, we have the chassis. It's a strong cage made of steel tubes that protects the driver and connects all of the parts together. These are the axles. The axles go between two wheels and connect the wheels to the chassis. When monster trucks perform their amazing stunts and high jumps, they need special parts to give the trucks a soft landing. These parts are called shock absorbers or shocks. 
Sometimes they have big springs in them to absorb the force of big jumps. But these heavy-duty monster truck shocks are filled with oil and have compressed gas at the end to give the truck an extra soft landing. Whoa, look at those huge tires! Let's mount the big monster truck tires on the wheels and attach them to the axles. These wheels and tires are 66 inches tall, just a bit shorter than an average adult man. And they weigh 645 pounds. That's heavier than three big grown-ups. These are the drive shafts. They take the spinning power of the engine and send it out to the axles and wheels. Monster truck engines are in the middle of the truck, so they need two drive shafts to send power to the front wheels and the back wheels. And here we have the engine. It's a supercharged 9.4 liter V8 engine with 1500 horsepower. That's almost as powerful as 10 regular cars. Let's take a closer look at the engine to see how it works. An internal combustion engine basically works by creating lots of little explosions. Fuel is sent from the fuel cell, through the fuel lines, and into the cylinders. This is called a V8 engine because it has eight cylinders in the shape of a V. Inside these cylinders are pistons that move up and down. When the piston moves down, a mixture of air and fuel are sprayed into the cylinder. Then the piston moves up and squeezes or compresses the fuel and air. Next, a spark plug creates a spark that ignites the compressed fuel and air. This creates a small explosion which pushes the piston back down. Finally, the piston comes back up which pushes the leftover exhaust fumes out to the exhaust headers and the process starts all over again. Intake, compression, combustion, exhaust. Intake, compression, combustion, exhaust. As the pistons move up and down, they turn the crankshaft, which uses a bunch of gears in the transmission to turn the drive shaft and the wheels. All these little explosions make the engine very hot. So we'll add a radiator to keep it cool. It's like an air conditioner for the engine. There's only one seat in the middle of the truck and it's custom made for each driver to keep the driver safe and secure. All we have left to add now is our colorful fiberglass body. The body is there to protect the driver from flying dirt and debris, but it also gives each truck their own special look. The body also uses clear panels so the truck driver can see what is happening near the wheels. Awesome! Our custom monster truck is ready for action! And now you know what makes most cars and trucks go. Okay, let's hop inside the cabin and get ready for our monster truck stunt training. Here we are back at the Monster Truck Training Academy with our brand new monster truck, Brain Cruncher. But before we can start practicing our stunts, we have to learn how to steer the truck. Monster trucks have independent rear steering. That means the driver can steer with just the front wheels, just the back wheels, or the front and back wheels together. The front wheels are turned with the steering wheel like a regular truck, but the back wheels are controlled separately by this thumb switch. All right, let's strap in and start practicing our monster truck stunts. The most basic monster truck stunt is the jump. Let's try a small one to start. Nice jump! Let's watch that again in slow motion. 
Notice how the big soft tires squish when the truck lands. And the shocks compress to absorb the impact of the landing. This is very important so the truck doesn't break its axle when it lands. And it also protects the driver from being knocked around in the cabin. Let's try an even bigger jump this time. The driver has to be sure to hit the jump at just the right speed to make it to the other side. Oh no! I guess we weren't going fast enough. That's okay. Big jumps like this take a lot of practice. Most drivers don't get it perfect the first time. And what do we do when we don't get something right the first time? We pick ourselves up and we try again. Okay, let's go a bit faster this time. Awesome! Monster trucks are so tough and powerful, they can jump up to 40 feet in the air. Another trick that monster trucks can do is a wheelie. The driver has to control the speed very carefully to keep the truck on the two back wheels. Look out! Oops! We held that wheelie a bit too long, I think. No problem. Let's try that wheelie again, but a little shorter this time. Nice! That did the trick. An even more difficult stunt is the nose wheelie. This is where the driver can keep the truck balanced on the front wheels. Great stunt! Monster trucks can do cool stunts even with all the wheels on the ground. With their special four-wheel steering, they can do awesome donuts and spin super fast. Woohoo! That was cool! One of my favorite monster truck stunts is called the backflip. Uh-oh! Don't go too fast or the truck will just crash into the barrier. Let's try that again. If we get the speed and power just right, the truck will land safely on all four wheels. All right! Let's watch that again. Next up is car crushing. Monster trucks can weigh up to 12,000 pounds. That's three or four times as heavy as a regular car. Monster trucks are so heavy that they can crush a regular car by driving over it. Let's see how flat we can get these cars if we land the truck on them after a jump. Good thing those cars are already broken. I wouldn't want a monster truck to land on my car. All right, that was so much fun. We learned a lot of cool stuff about monster trucks and internal combustion engines. Thanks for learning with us, Brainiacs. 
Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. Hey, Brainiacs. Do you remember when we learned about adding with our cool stun-jumping monster trucks? That was so much fun. Well, there's an even cooler way to do math, and that's multiplication. Okay, Lizzie, let's use our giant dump trucks to learn how multiplication works. Multiplication is like adding, but we repeat it a bunch of times. Let's say we have four dump trucks, and each truck has three cars in it. We could count the cars by adding three plus three equals six, six plus three equals nine, and nine plus three equals 12. We can also skip count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12. Or we can do it the quicker way and use multiplication by saying there are four groups of three cars. Or four times three equals 12. Four times three is the same as saying three plus three plus three plus three. We're adding the number three four times. Eventually, you'll learn the entire multiplication table so you can quickly do these calculations in your head. This is the multiplication table for all numbers up to 10. Whoa, that's a lot of numbers to learn. But don't worry, there are some tricks to learning a lot of these numbers easily. Anything that is multiplied by zero equals zero. If there are five trucks and zero cars in each truck, then we have zero cars. Five times zero is zero. If we have 10 trucks, each with zero cars, we still have zero cars. 10 times zero also equals zero. No matter which number you choose, if it's multiplied by zero, the answer is always zero. Any number that is multiplied by one stays the same number. If we have six trucks, and each truck has one monster truck, then we have six monster trucks. Six times one equals six. If we have 12 dump trucks, and each truck has one monster truck in it, then we have 12 monster trucks. 12 times one equals 12. Any number that is multiplied by one stays the same number. Six times one is six, 12 times one is 12, and even 100 times one is 100. So every number in the first row of the multiplication table just counts up by one. One times one is one. One times two is two. One times three is three. And so on. There are other patterns in the multiplication table. Let's look at the tens. It's just like multiplying by one, except we add a zero at the end. 10 times 1 is 10. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 3 is 30. What do you think 10 times 6 is? That's right! 10 times 6 is 6, 0. That's 60. What's 10 times 10? 10 times 10 is 10, 0. That's 100. The fives have an interesting pattern as well. Every number ends in either a five or a zero, and they alternate. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and so on. Here we have five trucks 
and each truck is carrying four beach balls. Let's use our multiplication table to find five times four. Five times four, it's 20. So five trucks, each carrying four beach balls, makes 20 beach balls in total. And it doesn't matter which number comes first. Last time we had five trucks, and each truck had four objects. This time we have four trucks, and each truck has five presents. How many presents do we have? Four times five is the same as five times four. They both equal 20. So four trucks, each carrying five presents equals 20 presents in total. Can you think of other ways that you can use multiplication in everyday situations? All right, we learned a lot about multiplication. Let's review what we learned so far. Multiplication is like adding the same number a bunch of times. Any number that's multiplied by zero is always zero. And any number multiplied by one is always that same number. There are patterns in the multiplication table that help us memorize each row. And it doesn't matter which order the numbers are in for multiplication. Great job, Brainiacs! You're learning some real grown-up math! Your teachers are going to be amazed how smart you are when you get to school. Hey, Brainiacs! It's Lizzie's first trip to the museum, and she's really excited to see the dinosaur exhibit. Most of the great dinosaurs died off millions of years ago, so all we have left of these amazing creatures are fossilized skeletons like this one of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Let's imagine going way back in time to learn about these awesome ancient animals. Dinosaurs are so cool! They were some of the biggest creatures to have ever lived! And they ruled the Earth for over 150 million years! We know that dinosaurs lived a long time ago, but how long ago was it? It was so long ago that humans didn't even exist yet! Most of the great dinosaurs went extinct around 66 million years ago. An animal is extinct when it doesn't exist anymore anywhere in the world. Let's try to picture what 66 million years ago looks like. Let's build a timeline that stretches way up into the sky. We'll put today at the bottom, and at the top is 66 million years ago. An average human lifespan is around 70 years. On this timeline, if we go back in time 70 years, before most of your grandparents were even born, that would only be as high as a single sheet of paper. 5,000 years ago, which is the beginning of recorded human history, would only be 71 sheets of paper high. Modern humans like you and me have existed for around 200,000 years. So on this timeline, that would only be 28 centimeters high. But if the great dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago, that would add up to a stack of paper 94 meters high. That's one meter taller than the Statue of Liberty. Whoa, that's a lot of lifetimes ago. Remember that each sheet of paper represents 70 years ago on our timeline. Not only that, but humans have only existed for a tiny amount of time compared to dinosaurs. Dinosaurs appeared around 235 million years ago. On our timeline, that would be a stack of paper 10 meters taller than the Eiffel Tower. So dinosaurs ruled the Earth for this long. 
and humans have only existed for this long. So humans are definitely the new kids on the block, and we showed up a long time after the dinosaurs went extinct. Dinosaurs came in all shapes and sizes. Some were quite small, like this Velociraptor, at less than six feet long. Deinonychus was a medium-sized dinosaur, at around 11 feet long. Then, of course, there were the big dinosaurs. Triceratops was as big as a mid-sized school bus, at around 30 feet long, and weighed just as much. <laughs> Imagine riding one of these to school? That might draw some attention. Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-Rex for short, was as long as a fire truck, including the big ladder. That's 40 feet long. Long before T-Rex and Triceratops showed up, there were enormous sauropod dinosaurs, like this Brachiosaurus. It would have been as big as an excavator with two giant arms. That's 69 feet long. The largest land animal living in the world today is the mighty African bush elephant. Look how small it is compared to these ancient giants. Let's learn some cool facts about two of these dinosaurs, Triceratops and T-Rex. Triceratops was a strong and sturdy dinosaur. It was a herbivore. That means it only ate plants. But even though they didn't eat meat, they were still very dangerous and had some of the best defensive adaptations in the history of the world. Triceratops and T-Rex both lived during the Cretaceous period, the last period of the great dinosaurs. A Triceratops would have made an excellent meal for a hungry T-Rex, but it was very risky to take on a Triceratops. It had a very unique ball and socket joint to connect its head to its neck, which gave it the ability to quickly swing its head in any direction, along with those dangerous horns. And unlike the relatively soft horns of a rhinoceros, which are made from keratin like our fingernails, the two horns on a Triceratops skull are solid bone, so they were very strong. Those huge horns would have made any predator think twice about attacking a Triceratops, but the large bony frill at the back of the skull would have also protected Triceratops' neck from any attackers brave enough to try. However, scientists now believe that the prominent horns and frill of a Triceratops skull were used primarily for courtship and other social displays. So perhaps there weren't many dinosaurs unwise enough to test the Triceratops in battle after all. This is Tyrannosaurus rex, king of the Cretaceous carnivores. A carnivore is an animal that only eats meat. The name Tyrannosaurus rex means king of the tyrant lizards. And the name is well deserved. It was one of the largest carnivores in the world. As far as dinosaurs go, T-Rex was probably very smart. Its brain was twice as big as the brains of other giant carnivores. T-Rex had the strongest bite force of any land animal. It had a bite force of over 8,000 pound force. That's like the weight of three small cars pressing down on each bite from T-Rex's powerful jaws, which were lined with sharp banana-sized teeth up to eight inches long. Its bite was powerful enough to crack open bones, which gave T-Rex a special advantage over other dinosaurs since it could get at the extra nutrition inside the bones and could consume every bit of their prey. T-Rex had a highly developed sense of smell and could smell prey from great distances. Based on the impressions left on the inside of T-Rex skulls, scientists discovered that compared to the size of their brain, their olfactory bulbs were very large. That's the part of the brain used for smelling. 
This means that T-Rex's sense of smell was probably as good or better than a bloodhound, which has one of the best senses of smell in the animal kingdom. T-Rex also had excellent vision. Its eyes pointed forward, giving it 3D vision even better than modern eagles, and could possibly see prey at distances up to 6 kilometers away. All of these things combined, excellent vision, incredible sense of smell, big brain, and the most powerful bite of any land animal, made Tyrannosaurus rex one of the most formidable carnivores the world has ever seen. I hope you enjoyed learning about dinosaurs and find them as cool as I do. Hey parents, if you'd like to see your child's name in the credits and other fun perks, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash braincandytv. Thanks so much for your support, it really means a lot. Thanks for watching Brainiacs, see you next time.